After a little break, we're back up the top of the Collins Lift for our final couple of runs. I'm headed across the high traverse and going to try to get to Alf's High Rustler. What I end up on is the little run that's red and finally work my way over. So here we go. And after a nice cup of espresso, we head back up the mountain and here we are at the top again. Mary Jo's going to head down one way and I'm headed back across the high traverse. I'm going to try the high, high traverse this time and see if it's a little smoother than the low traverse that I skied a little while ago. Going to do a little uphill poling here to get on this high traverse. Oh, and there's another one of those signs warning about extreme terrain ahead and avalanche control area. And actually this traverse is a little better. The trouble is it eventually comes back down to the same spot. But it is, again, just spectacular. And there's a one tough little dip. Now, here we are getting near the end of the trail, and I'm looking for a little drop that sends you off through the trees. Come zip around this corner and see something up ahead looks like a little slalom course. Hmm. And as I go by, I realize that was the traverse I wanted to take. But, should be able to get up here and cut over to it. You can kind of get an idea of just how steep this place is. Now, Problem is, I've just come out on the back side of the mountain, and I don't want to ski down the back side. I want to come down that run I like. So, so I've got to do a little bit of creative skiing here to get back on the right side. Obviously, a lot of people have done this same thing, and also have to avoid that pile of rocks over there because this is, snow is real thin up here in places. Well, <laughs> as I said, I avoided the rocks, but now here's where it got really interesting. This is sort of like trying to get down a cliff trouble is you can't just ski, because for one thing there's trees, which on stuff this steep I'm not very good at, but more than that there's rocks everywhere, and besides the damage they do to your skis, when you hit rocks with any speed, your skis stop and you don't, and that's no fun. So I picked my way down, now why I didn't take my skis off and just kind of walk down a little ways, I don't know, but actually that might have been tougher than trying to do it on skis, because like I said, this is a lot steeper than it looks on this video. I think there were a few times when I came out in places I thought I was about to die, <laughs> but not really. So I make my way down, finally getting out into some open terrain. A couple of times I had to do that, just kind of slide down where I could make a turn that I didn't accelerate too much. Oh, didn't see those rocks coming. Oh, it looks like we're beginning to get out in somewhere we can actually ski. Or at least where uh, once or twice a year a skier can ski. Still more traverses. If you can call that a traverse. All right, finally we're out on an open face. All right, this is great. Can actually make a... Nope, I didn't going down, I'm still trying to get over to the run I want to make, that Alps High Rustler. And at first I thought this was it. Without knowing exactly where that traverse is I wanted to take, because I know I'm below it, I just decided to take this and ski down until I can find a place to cut across further. The snow is just so nice in here, I really enjoyed skiing this run. several places along here that look like I might be able to cut through the trees, but it's probably not a good idea to cut through the trees on this, in this resort when you don't know what's on the other side because occasionally you end up coming out on a cliff band. And I'm not real good at dealing with cliffs. But as I got down a little lower, 
at some point down here I finally find a spot it looks like a lot of people have cut through so I figure that's fairly safe so I think this may be stone crusher I'm coming out on to get an idea of just how steep these runs are they're also great because not that many people are going to go through what it takes to get here to ski down this, so the snow is usually real good over here. So I finally cut through the woods and come out over on another run. This is Alps run, except I'm so far down now, I'm beyond the good part. You can tell by looking across that it's not anywhere near as steep as it has been. So, and I'm getting the other problem with Alps run, if you don't cut off of it soon enough, you end up below the gold miner's daughter, where Mary Jo's going to be down there waiting on me, and I'm going to have to go for a hike, and I really don't want to do that at this point. So, I've got to go down here a little ways and find a nice place to cut through. Get back over on a run that'll get me back to where I want to get to. Here we are almost down to the bottom. While I'm running down this little flat place, just look across at the mountains over there. That's the backside of Brighton Ski Resort. Now, after a really hard day of skiing, one very important lesson that I learned today is to remember to turn your GoPro off at the end of the day. And that's because if you don't, you end up with some awesome videos like this one. Me taking my skis off, sticking them in the ski rack, taking my helmet off and carrying it upside down, placing it on the table, and creating about a 20 minute video of a cement wall. It's really exciting. <laughs> anyway, I did cut most of that out. But uh, we had a great day, totally wore ourselves out, and can't wait to get back to Alta again.